Yeah, out. Why are you so cute? You guys have been asking about Mark's finger. One in particular. <laughs> like having a baby. That is the final product. It's turning everything orange. I don't want to get too close, but look at that gas. Good morning, our lambs have grown. Kidding. Uh, we are back over with our, these are June lambs, right? Yeah. These are our June lambs, I forget, because I've been dealing with September lambs. Uh, this will be their first market weight weigh-in. If we have enough to go on the trailer tonight, then I will uh, make the trek to the uh, sales barn uh, before we get busy here. Because I think next, I think actually in a couple days we're going to be starting some uh, forage field work for the fall, and then we're going to get right into beans next week. So Chris and I are just trying to get some of these sheep jobs done. Uh, so we're very glad lambing's done, but there are a few odds and sides that we need to do before I'm on a tractor seat once again. Okay, 105 pounds and over, that way, the rest go that way. I think we'll thank ourselves after. All right, come on, come on. Your other right. Didn't get the memo. Okay, that was a bit of a waste of time. We only got five. So we're gonna let them just go with the rest of the side and we'll re-weigh them, probably not next week, because I don't think there's even gonna be enough next week to make it worth the, uh, worth the weight or worth the trip up there. So we're going to, uh, we'll weigh them in two weeks and then we'll have a decent sized load at that point. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, hello, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, tomatoes. What are you looking for? Oh, relax, where's your, where's your stuff? They're all out there. Where's your bitten? Way out here! <laughs> oh! Tomatoes, stop! Hey, big mama. Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, out! morning guys I have to apologize I did not pick up my camera after uh, after I saw you across the road yesterday uh, my sister was here and today is launch day for my wool stuff so I was stressing and panicking and doing all the things over on the website uh, to make sure everything would kind of go on without a hitch today so hopefully everything is good and all the planning was worth it but I am a little bit behind on a couple jobs I wanted to get done yesterday afternoon one of them being I do have to do a creep area we did make these guys 
this pen a bit bigger. I could probably make it even bigger because I have lots of room this time. Uh, so I think for now though, I'll keep them how they are and I'm gonna just build the first of probably two creep areas for the big pen here, uh, just behind their pen. I have to get them vaccinated, so we may do that yet tomorrow when I have my girl with me. You guys are cute. Why are you so cute? Do I look stressed? <laughs> so the launch just happened and it went really, really well. You continue to blow me away. When I do the newsletters and when I come out with these launches, uh, I actually have your faces, even though I've never met you, in my brain when I'm making these things. And uh, um, I usually put out feelers of, of what you guys want when it, in regards to wool because I don't know what to make usually. And uh, like this one, for instance, came right from you guys. And it ended up being, I think, my favorite product on this launch. They're so freaking cute. I love them. Anyway, and they're really easy to make. So yeah, I just, I thank you guys for encouraging me to, to do this stuff. Because honestly, a day like today, I, I'm like, this is not worth it. <laughs> it is not worth it. It's not worth the stress. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of effort put into it. And uh stuff can go wrong <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i think overall it went really well and uh i'm just really tired because i over consume all the things that can go wrong and then i'm i'm done when it's done <laughs> I've done a few rounds on my own before I turn on the camera because I'm pretty cautious of not knowing what I'm doing, but so far so good. Uh, of course, I am hands-free, so fear not. The This is our fourth cut of this field. This is our fairly old stand here. This is our fourth or fifth year on this stand. That's our new seating right there. We're going to leave it. Um, but this, we're probably gonna terminate after first cut next year. And uh, and uh, I don't know where we're gonna, I think we might plant where the corn is again, I'm not sure, to, uh, to take the place of this stuff. So it's going good. The cut looks surprisingly good. It's actually probably comparable to our second cut, if not even maybe a little bit better. We're not entirely sure. Third cut was a write-off. It was just so droughty. And uh, honestly, all this growth really came uh, August, early September, right after we cut third cut, it actually started to rain. And that's when everything kind of greened up again. So very grateful we got that rain. We weren't even, we planted oats thinking we were not gonna get any more hay off this field. So we are grateful for the 20 acres we are able to snag off this field. And then we're probably gonna cut 20 out of the 30 of the oats and between the two 20 acre fields we should easily be able to fill a bag and i think that's the plan and then we'll do one more bag of uh, corn silage and i think that's all happening like starting tomorrow okay one field down and we are headed down the road to um where we planted those oats as cover crops i'm just following mark right now and uh, he's gonna do the headlands for me what is he doing 
it's lifting it up and down in the yard right now we actually had to we had to lift it up a bit this field uh, hasn't had the field prep quite as nicely as our hay fields get prepped so we're a little scared of stones in this field so uh, he we did roll it after we planted the oats but we're gonna just I saw him uh, just adjusting the height of the cutter bar so I think we've just lifted everything up and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna get as many oats obviously but we also don't want any rocks I think that's the logic and the theory the oats. I believe Mark said the, uh, oh, it's pretty high actually. It's up to my upper. Oh, it's pretty high. Pretty thick. Oh, yep, there's a few little heads coming out there, but I think he said for the most part it was in the boot stage. And for all I know about oats, which is nothing, uh, he said uh, in the boot stage, it's actually pretty high in protein. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong, but I think that's what uh, Mark said today when I was half listening. And this is where I used to work. Got a lot of steps in back in the day. Now I drive too much equipment. Okay, Mark is opening up this field for me, partly because you don't trust me. No, I don't. No offense. <laughs> we just have to get this. Because no matter what, you always call me after you take over. Well, yeah. Um, anyways, a lot of you guys have been asking about Mark's finger. One in particular. <laughs> um, Everyone's number one. Alright, gives the people an update on La Finger. The finger is uh, not awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's tendon damage that was causing swan neck finger, and then it started causing a secondary injury called mallet finger. And basically, one joint was wanting to go up, and one joint was wanting to go down. So they have a special splint on it to try to correct, I think, the mallet finger part of it. And then I'm going to get a new splint in a week and a half or two weeks to correct the tip uh, droopish, droopy the swan. issue, the swan neck finger. So uh, it, it wasn't really encouraging because they kind of said it's a hard injury to fix no matter what. No and surgery. No surgery and uh, the fact that it kind of went a little longer than it should have uh, doesn't help the situation either. Right, so I guess lesson learned, uh, don't just assume Emerge is gonna call the specialist. Yeah. You gotta rattle some chains, especially after two months of not hearing anything. So, yeah. life lesson. Life lesson. Okay, we are finished. We are finished the uh, oats here. And on that note, let me shut you off here. Let's go. This actually might also be our last year with the New Holland. I didn't want to say anything until we were completely done. We have limped through year after year. Uh, Mark figures we've had this beast for, I think we bought it maybe in 2014, but it very, very used, uh, and it's 2022. I think perhaps this spring, if we can get a new one ordered, then we will maybe say goodbye to our Hayvine. She's, I would say she's done us well, but not without uh, a lot of work words. Yeah, so this is done. We've got uh, 21.4 acres here. We got 20 acres at home and then uh, however much corn silage we need. Probably it's usually in and around between 10 and 15 acres, but we'll just see how much yield should be lower because we don't have near the stock uh, height as usual just because of the drought this year. So we will uh, we'll definitely keep you posted as the weekend rolls in and through. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Good morning, everyone. Carissa and I, I wasn't talking to myself for once, uh, are going to vaccinate these little bottle lambs like I wanted to yesterday. Uh, and then I can open this all up and we can put a creep feeder in here. But I have to use this, so I'm just kinda, we're gonna just wing it and see if we can figure it out. Yeah, you grab. Okay, that's not wing. Record task against Anna. Look at, there's a whole list of stuff. All right, well, sorry, Carissa. This is the baby with the mummy with the preg tongue. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How do I add it to a group? You know what? We're not gonna do this because we're just gonna do it and mark them because I don't know how to, I'll have to ask a list of many questions. <laughs> They're just like belly, they don't like me. I know. Not that we can see it. Yeah. <laughs> One more. I think we know. Hi. Oh, great. There. Okay, I was able to get the flock watch group set up. So what I did is I actually set up a group. So I actually set up a group called Bottle Lambs. And then I scanned, I went through and just scanned each one. And now they're all in the system. And then put uh, Clostridial vaccine. That's how I set up the group. I don't know if that's, there should be a different way to do that. I see that there's like, you can put that you treated them, but I couldn't get it to work. So what I'll probably do is email Michael again with more questions and just say, how can I add that to their information? M maybe this is how you do it, but I think there's more of like a medical record that you can put in and then know in three weeks when it has to get redone. So I think that's it for sheep work for today um, because the next two days we are going to be busy getting probably likely about 50% of their year's worth of feed uh, put away here. Planted some oats that we cut that yesterday. Uh, we cut our uh, older seeding hay. We left our new seeding just to be sure it was okay for next year. And we're also putting up a bag of corn silage. So Bob dropped off the bag of this morning. Uh, so I think today, hopefully later this afternoon, we're going to start with corn silage. But before that, I have to actually clean up the little bit of the bag that was left from last year. It's really quite amazing how much of this stuff fits in a bag. It looked like barely anything sitting there, but it's so packed in there that when you fluff it, it's quite a pile. So now I feel kind of guilty because corn's not exactly cheap. We were pretty darn close, I would say.
Okay, it's go time. We just uh, got the we just got the text from Ethan. He's doing his corn silage today too. So he just finished his last load. I have to run and get his wagons, get back here, get all the tractors uh, hooked up with their wagon snatchers. Mark is gonna get the bagger hooked up, the bag onto the bagger, and I think that's all I know for now. silage in his boot or in his back in your boot or in your back yeah good morning I wish I could say that it's the exposure but no nope, that's fog and today is supposed to be an all-day hay day so once again the universe likes to play little jokes on Sandy and her anxiety when it comes to hay but it'll get done. We have everything lined up for today. I have to run and grab the merger at, uh, at Ethan's. We're gonna put two of those rows into one. <laughs> I wish you could see it. And then I think Ethan's gonna plan to come around maybe around two or so. We're gonna start at the hay and then we're gonna finish over at the oat field uh, just down the road, what, what you guys saw. So here's our corn silage from yesterday. So that is a beautiful sight to see. The, my only issue is we did this last time. We always cut it a bit short, the bag and then the feed is like right here. So I gotta kind of take some of this feed out to be able to seal this bag a little bit better. But that is the final product. Beauty, chef's kiss. Uh, what corn silage is, a lot of people have asked me like, why are you taking off corns when it's so green? We actually want the whole plant. So corn silage is where we take the whole plant uh, chop it all up and make a feed out of it. This will get ensiled. So this bag's gonna get sealed for about six weeks and then I can open up and it'll be brown like the stuff. I'll go show you the stuff that uh, this is the stuff from 2021 that we ensiled. So that green will eventually look like this. Like brown. It actually smells really good still considering it's been kind of left out in the air now. So we aren't feeding this. This will just be spread back out on the fields with manure. Um, so we've just had to adapt our rations based on not having corn silage in them for about six weeks. And then we'll redo the rations once again. Back in the captain's chair and now we are merging. So we're putting two rows into one and why we're doing that is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good enough cut, but definitely not as heavy as like first cut where we would, uh, well, I think we'd still put two into one. 
Um, I think with second cut we put three rows into one. That's how little we had. So I think this cut is actually better than our second cut because uh, we aren't thinking that we can put three into one, which is a good sign. And why we want to put more rows into one, it just makes Ethan a little more efficient. His machine can handle a heck of a lot more quantity than our old harvesters we used here when we were first doing hay. Yeah, this should hopefully make stuff go a little quicker. Uh, we had to wait a while for that dew to lift off this morning, so uh, it is fairly moist still, but we got a good breeze and we got pure, suns, pure sunny skies now. So we're going to get this done, then we're going to go down the road and do oats. Our problem is we're probably not going to be started till like 3, and then uh, if it gets dark tonight, we have to look into lights for those wagons, or we may just have to finish tomorrow. So this may be a three-day process after all, which isn't very exciting, but we we're hoping to get a quicker start today. It's not going to happen. All right, we're going to turn here shortly. Okay, Ethan just got here and we abandoned uh, merging the oats for now. We have about half of it done. We don't want to get too far ahead because we aren't sure if we're going to need them all at the end of the day. Hopefully we won't. Uh, but Mark was able to jig our hitch on the fence. So today I get to drop the fence on the wagons, which is glorious. I do like the open station to be honest. Anyway, so I get the radio and I get AC. Okay, wish us luck. starting these bags because it has to be the right tension and the right pressure and packing because this is all packing as it goes here so it's a little finickety the first few wagon load mark is running it for that reason <laughs> our hay and now we're just nosing into this uh, oat field here at just on the road and it's five o'clock so we did that hay in two and a half hours which I thought was pretty good so if we can do this in two and a half hours then we should be done before dark which is good if not we're gonna have to find lights for these wagons he's got lights for these wagons I just don't know if we have the right adapters for it so anyways here we are Morning guys, it is the day after harvest, it's Sunday. We finished up here last night about dark. It was like 7.30 maybe, eight o'clock. And then we spent a little time in the shop <laughs> celebrating the end, of, uh, the end of forage harvest, at least for the sheep. So we have enough feed now to get us through easily to first cut next year. The silage, that silage bag will last us till uh, this time next year. So that is nice. It's ironic. Uh, I got a message. Someone messaged DM me on Instagram. They're like, "Are the rumors true? Are you getting out of sheep?" I'm like, "Have you have you been have you been?" This was a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of anxiety. So uh, yeah, I have no plans of getting rid of my sheep. So I'm not really sure where that came from but anyway I guess that's why they're called rumors this is the bag we did yesterday we reserve about 150 feet of actual plastic we don't fill it to the end probably you're looking at 120 or so uh, feet is probably all that we actually put up half the bag is alfalfa half the bag is oats and you can see mark put a little mark I should probably seal that silage bag I might just do both tomorrow I'm gonna show you the reason I'm not doing this bag today it's because it could probably kill me. It's turning everything orange. 
I don't want to get too close, but look at that gas coming out. I can actually hear it. I let them gas off for a couple days and if you don't what can happen is they kind of blow up like a balloon and you may have to poke a hole in it just to let that gas off um, but you also don't want to wait too long because you don't want the oxygen getting back into this uh, into this forage and, spo and spoiling it. There's a fine line of when to do it but I'm certainly not doing it when that gas is uh, coming out of it. My dad got into silo gas when I was younger and it was just, we almost lost him. And I just, I know it's a bag, but I'm just scared of gas. So we're not gonna go there. Anyway, this is a good job to get done. For sure, the sheep will be happy.